are you guys doing today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's go ahead and set this up so we can see the charts. What are we looking at today? This is the futures market and these are the indexes. So this is the daily chart. These are the daily charts on the indexes. Up in the upper left-hand corner, we have the S&P 500. Upper right-hand corner, we have the Dow. And bottom left-hand corner, we have the Russell. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the NASDAQ. And these are the daily charts. <coughs> so, excuse me. And I like to look at the daily charts first. First thing I want to know is whether we look like we're in an uptrend or a downtrend based on the overall long-term direction of the market. So we can have some sort of a bias to our market direction when we're day trading. And this market, you know, we've been talking about this in days past, those of you who have attended uh, my live class. And you can see that we're basically bearish on these markets. We do anticipate the market falling out the bottom of this. This is an X1SA1. If you don't know what that is, stick around. And I'll teach you. X1 AS, X1 SA1 is a probability. It's the probability of the market rising or falling in price. And in this case, this was a low probability uh, rally. And so we did not expect it to continue higher. We expected it to fall. And it's doing exactly what we expected it to do. It's gone drifting sideways into this little narrow channel formation and this is kind of what we're looking for and expecting on these markets and in fact i've just drawn this triangle in here this is actually what we call a spider web okay it's forming a spider web pattern and so the way i do that is i use my little spider web tool it's actually called a speed fan but that's no fun to call a speed fan it's actually a spider web okay i call it spider web so you have a natural trend line here you have another natural trend line right here right which is going right up along the lines of those blue lights and then we have a horizontal line, which is going to come in right in here. All right. So this is our horizontal, and that's where we expect it to come down and touch. And that is a spider web, three, three webs. We'll, sometimes we'll get four in there, four lines. But you can see they're just the natural trend lines that are working in combination with those blue lights in there, which are part of the Bulls and Bears. Bulls and Bears is a proprietary plug-in to track and trade that turns the price bars red, yellow, and green. It's based on Fibonacci and Elliott Wave. So if you're a Fibonacci and Elliott Wave aficionado, you probably can recognize what we're looking at here. And this is the Fibonacci projections. And we're projecting to the downside at this point, all right? So if I wanted to draw my Fibonacci projections in there off of the top, down to this low, up to the high, you can see that this is the projection that's currently coming in, breaking the 38.2, and we're anticipating 61.8 would be the the uh, low of the previous B point, and then a projection down to 100%. That's where we'd expect this market to turn, start to rally, and go back up. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to go all the way to 100%. It can go any market can do anything it wants. It's just that we're going to make probability projections, right? So that's what we're looking for here on the Dow. And that's why we like to come down now, and we have our bias to the downside. We do believe that this market is going to fall. And we want to now go out and look at our news reports. And so if we come down here and I pull up the news, the economic calendar, and I slide that on the screen for you, you should be able to see that. Let's see, make sure that this thing's working. Yep. Okay. Economic calendar. So the economic calendar is what's telling us the government reports that are coming out today and what should move the market. So the biggest thing that we've got is at 630 this morning, we had housing starts and building permits. So the, the building permits went up. So the previous was 1.443. The consensus was going to be 1.443. That's what the market thought it was going to do. Uh, the forecast was 1.43. And the actual was 1.54. So that's good. That's good news. That means they're building more houses. They More building permits. Okay. But then we look at the housing starts. Uh, previous was 2%. The forecast was minus 2.5%, and it was an actual minus 11%, which is really bad. So kind of conflicting news there in that we had building permits. We have more building permits, but fewer housing starts by a long ways. Okay. So building permits month over month, 6.9. The previous was 0.1. The consensus or the forecast was minus 1.3. So that's up. That's That's bullish. Housing starts again, and then we got the red book year over year, 20-year bond. 
These don't do too much. The API crude oil, we could go watch crude oil at 2.30 this afternoon if we wanted to. That should move the market a little bit on the crude oil uh, market. But that's it for today. There's nothing really too exciting. Tomorrow's going to be the exciting day. Tomorrow for the news is going to be the exciting day. 12 o'clock noon, we're going to have the Fed interest rate decision. And that's going to be, uh, a, it could be a big market mover. Um, he's The consensus is 5.5. Forecast is 5.5. Previous was 5.5. So they're not thinking he's going to change it. So if he does, it'll really chase the market, all right? So FOMC economic projections. So tomorrow at noon is going to be kind of a big day for us. We'll watch that very closely. But that's it for the news. Not really a whole lot. Um, let's see. So that's what we're looking for. Now let's go over, and we've kind of missed the opening bell. It's went off one minute ago. Let's swing over. This is the daily charts. So let's go down to the one-minute charts. And here we go with the one-minute charts. No, oh, and as usual, the Russell kind of takes off like the weird brother, cousin Russell over there. And then we've got uh, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. So the Dow's in the upper right-hand corner, not doing anything, really just kind of flopping around there like a fish on the side of the on the, on the bank. And the S&P, basically the same thing, not doing anything. The NASDAQ's showing a little bit of a down push right it came down flopped around to the downside but now it's kind of pulling back now the dow is starting to rally so is the s p so we're going to establish our morning our morning range the russell is starting to take off like a rocket ship so that's good we'll watch the russell here maybe we'll trade the russell today yesterday we started off right out of the gate trying to trade the nasdaq and if you remember we got whacked a little bit and we had to recover we recovered that one and then we decided we were going to go to the dow and so we started trading the dow anticipating a an abc pattern in the dow so we got in on that little pullback looking for the market to make that break higher and it didn't do it so we reversed our position said maybe that pattern is going to fail oftentimes a failed pattern is the best pattern in the opposite direction and then it failed so we reversed once more so i could show you how that was done and we tried to go long and then it failed. So we ended up with three failures in a row and put us down about 500 bucks. And then that was kind of the end of our, our hour long session. And I said, let's come back at the top of the hour. And then if we have to, we'll come back at the next top of the hour. We came back at nine o'clock and man, that market started to move. We caught that run and it was it ended up being a very good day. So we recovered our entire loss plus made an additional 500 bucks yesterday. And that was a good day. Um, so ended up with a good day yesterday. That was a nice run there. It was a little after nine o'clock. That thing started to take off like a rocket ship and just kept on going. It was a good run. So I like to trade the top of the hours. And it's funny how that works. And usually it's not right at the top of the hour. It's usually a couple minutes into the top of the hour. And then those markets starts to take off. And so I like to watch the top of the hour. And I've mentioned that before. So yesterday was a good good move on that one. Let's come in here and get some information going for us. Let's see, I'm gonna get up here. Who is Land Turner, just so you guys know. Land Turner, I'm a former instructor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Board of Education Center. That was a while ago. I was a young man when I was doing that, but pretty good feather in my cap. I enjoyed working out there, worked with some really wonderful individuals, learned a lot. And now I'm a current finance instructor at Utah Tech University, formerly Dixie State University, for those of you who know it as Dixie State. So Dixie State changed their name to Utah Tech. So uh, I teach uh, finance classes, teach how to trade at, at Dixie State University. In fact, classes start in October. If you're in that area or you want to travel and go down and see Zion Park and spend a, spend a week in one of my live classes down there, you can come and join my classes at uh, Utah Tech University down in St. George, Utah. I'm currently sitting up here in U in uh, in Logan, Utah. This is my summer home up here in Logan. And then my uh, winter home is down in St. George. So I go down there and I teach at the university during the winter time, but in the summertime, get away from the heat, come up here and uh, have a little bit cooler uh, place to live during the summertime. We're in a beautiful location. If you've never been to Logan, you should come by. This is uh, where our corporate offices are up here in Logan, Utah. And uh, we'd love to love to see you. It's a beautiful place either way. Down in St. George where you can come and see Zion Park and, and uh, 
Grand Canyon or up here in Logan in the middle of the up here in the middle of the summertime come up here it's beautiful we're up in a big valley there's big rocky mountains all the way around us it's one of the most gorgeous places in the country and i have a place i have a house in both places and i go back and forth between the two all right here we are we are trading the futures market for those of you who need a little uh, insight on why we trade the futures market the futures market is has no pattern day trading rules so the futures market is out of chicago all right, we're not, this is, these are the indexes, the stock indexes, then they trade out of uh, New York City, right, in the, Chicago, in, the, in the New York Stock Exchange, but we can trade the indexes themselves, they're being traded out of Chicago in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now, different exchanges have different rules, and in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, over in Chicago, right, no pattern day trading rules. So if you're over in New York, you have to deal with the pattern day trading rules where you have to have a minimum of $25,000 in your account to day trade. There's very little, if any, leverage. So you can't, you have, it takes a lot of money to make a small profit over here because of the leverage, the way it's designed, takes a small amount of money to make a bigger profit. So for example, let's come in here and draw some dollar calculators on here. If we take our dollar calculator and we draw that on this trend from the high of this trend, just down to where this market's currently trading, that's a $250 move. And to make that $250, if we come over here to the key and track and trade, you can see that the initial margin was 8,000, but the day margin on peak, which is what we are, we're in the, the on peak day margin, it's only $750. So you only have to have $750 in your account you put that up, 750 for one contract. We trade contracts over here. We don't trade shares. And so one contract represents a certain number of shares and or a certain, if you're trading corn, it would be a certain uh, number of bushels of corn. If you're trading crude oil, it'd be a certain number of barrels of crude oil. And so it's the same thing when we trade the Dow. And that's just listed right here. We lay in, line it out in layman's terms. It says one contract represents $5. Uh, the Dow Jones current price of 34864 equals $174,000. So that's what you're controlling with one contract, all right? So you get to make the money as if you're controlling the entire contract, but you only have to put up a performance bond or what we call a margin of $750. So for $750, you can make the same amount as if you had just put up $34,000. So that's how that works. And so that's why it's really nice. You never required to put up the $34,000 like you would be in the stock market because you're on leveraged on a leveraged account. So you can open up your account with, you know, five or $10,000 and you can get started doing this and you can day trade to your heart's content. There's no rules like we have in the stock market that says you have to have $25,000. And, um, you know, you actually have to have more than that because if you go one penny below that, and you day trade, they shut your account down for 90 days. No, we don't do any of that crap over here in the futures market. So we're trading out of Chicago, and that's why we trade the futures market. And it does require a little bit, um, a little dip, a different software package. So if you want to trade through the Chicago Exchange, you have to have a software program that's designed to trade through Chicago. If you want to trade through the New York Exchange, you have to have a software package that trades through the New York Stock Exchange. This is Track and Trade Futures. It's designed to trade through the Chicago uh, exchanges, and that's what I like to do. And so you can go and get yourself a platform over there. My platform is Track and Trade Live Futures. You can get a 14-day free trial over at trackandtrade.com and then come and join us over here and follow along and see how I trade. And I'm not teaching you. I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just here showing you how I like to do it. What I like to do is I like to watch the first morning bell for a little bit and see how things shake out a little bit before we start trading. And this, this market is really dead today. The only thing that's given us any, you know, little cousin, little cousin Russell down here, he's taken off like a shot. And he's given us actually an ABC pattern in here we could have traded. I was jabber John over here and not talking. I was just talking too much and didn't catch it. But there was that nice little ABC pattern. This is what we like to look for right in here. You see this little rally up in here off the opening bell. Made the B, it pulled back, gave us one red bar. And that's where we like to get in on a break above the red bar, the first price bar to break a new high and look for that market to continue the rally higher. And that Russell is doing that for us. And the reason I wasn't real too excited about getting into the Russells because none of the other markets are moving. I generally like to see these markets move together. They generally like to move in in a in a trend. I call it convergence. So they're converging together. 
and they're all moving together. What happens is when you get one going one direction and one going the other direction, that's divergence. And I don't like to trade divergence. I like to trade convergence when they're all kind of moving, swinging together. If you notice, their trends are kind of the same. If you go back and look at historical charts, they're all kind of the same movement. But what happens when you're sitting here trading live is one will take off and go sooner, and then the others will follow. So what I like to do is trade the laggers, the ones that follow. They haven't taken off yet, and the others have already gone, and so it's a little bit slow to go, so you can get into that one and be pretty confident that it's going to follow the rest. So that's why I like to watch four at a time. And so if I'm just watching one, I kind of miss out what's happening on the other ones, and they kind of give you an idea of what to watch for. So right now we're seeing the Dow looks like it wants to go down. That's actually a little sell signal, but it's so ugly and tight that I don't really want to trade it. But you can see on the Dow, we got a down, A, B, and then here's our little C right here. And this is a sell signal right here to go short. And you can see the little green bars in there. This is, a, I'm going to show you the little pattern. So I'm going to add that to the screen. <clears throat> and this is the pattern right here. You see that over on the Dow where we got the bars coming down, two little green bars coming back. And then the markets, we anticipate the fall again on the break of those green bars. So that would be a sell signal on the Dow. But the reason I don't want to take it is because if you look at the, um, if you come over here and look at the uh, NASDAQ and the uh, S&P, they're both rallying. They're both taking off. So Cousin Russell over here and the Dow, they're starting to fall while we got the S&P and we got the NASDAQ starting to rally. So that's real strong divergence between those four markets. That's a lot of indecision going on there. So I'm not ready to put or commit any money to this market right now. I want to wait and see what happens. See if we can't get a little bit smoother. Um, Patterns going. You also notice that we're using Heikinashi bars, and Heikinashi bars <clears throat> are a, a style of of smoothing to the price bars. And so, if we use candlesticks, I mean, we can also come in here and we can use just open high low close bars like this, right? So we got open high low close bars, or we got candlestick bars. Candlestick bars are probably the most popular nowadays, so we kind of use the candlestick bars. Uh, let's see, what did I just do? T candlestick, uh, not candle, I don't want candlestick, I want candlestick price bars. There we go. Candlestick bars, they're probably the most popular nowadays, pretty much what everybody uses because they like the candlestick patterns. But when we turn on the Heiken Ashley, we get a different set of patterns and they mean a little bit different things. Look at the Russell starting to fall now, coming back down and testing that VWAP. And so I can turn on the high Ashi and I can turn them off. If I turn them off, this is what most people are looking at. This is what a normal chart looks like without the high Ashi bars turned on. So if I turn the high Ashi bars on, that's kind of a smoothing component that's added to those bars. It makes it a little bit easier to identify the trends. Now what we do when we have the high Ashi bars on and we're looking at the trends, what we want to do is we want to um, make sure that we're looking at the, the, the little topping tails and bottoming tails. If we're seeing trends that have lots of topping tails and bottoming tails, that's not good. We don't want that. Okay, here we are coming in with the Dow. It's making that little drop right here. This is the little ABC pattern on the Dow. It's weak. It's not a very good strong one. So A, B, C. And so we got that little pattern coming in like I just showed you with the, with the system. And so A, B, C, and it's coming down, breaking 61.8. And we want to see it go down to 130, 130.9. 130.9 is the golden ratio um, of the Fibonacci projections. Now, everybody's familiar, or most people are familiar, with the Fibonacci projection of 61.8 or the retracement of 61.8. Do you know we have two golden ratios within the Fibonacci sequence? And that one, the other one is 130.9. That's the other golden ratio to the extension side. So we like to see the markets go A, B, C, and then extend down to 130.9, go to that golden ratio. And that makes a nice, perfect little, what we call a, on the retracement, gives us the pattern that we call a Fibonacci bow tie. So we look for the bow tie to complete after that. So there's a lot of things that if the market will make nice trends, that you get all these different um, opportunities and patterns. But as the market just kind of sits here and bounces back and forth sideways, we can't, we don't have a lot of fun with a lot of the Fibonacci projections and extensions and patterns and being able to castle your trades and you know you have to just kind of deal with what they're going to give you and right now the market's just being kind of lazy what we do is it kind of generally in the morning first thing out of the gate it goes up and it set, sets a high then it goes down and it sweeps out all the trailing stops and sets the low and then we get kind of a kind of a, a channel 
that we look for the mark to break through and decide whether it wants to be bullish or bearish. So on this one, we're going to just kind of draw our channel lines on the S&P right here. And it's breaking that channel to the upside right now. And you'll see that we got the channel here. This is the previous high on the open. We're going to look for the, for the Dow to start to rally. Here's the NASDAQ starting to rally. We got that high there. We'll come in here and establish the low. The low was right down here on the NASDAQ. So that gives us kind of the channel for the day. So if we're above that channel, we're going to say the market's bullish. If we're below that channel, we're going to say the market's bearish. We've established the high for the Russell. We're going to establish the low for the Russell. The low opening was here. We could come back and go kind of put a couple of little spots in here to show that we got an area of support, not just a line of support. But here's an area of support down here for the Russell. We have our channel for the NASDAQ. We have our channel for the, the Dow now. We'll put a couple of lines in here. For the downside on the Dow, we got another line right up in here that we'll be mindful of. And then here we have this uh, S&P. looked like it was going to take off and establish this little peak up in here as it bounced off or tried to approach that blue line, which is the uh, volume-weighted average price or the VWAP. A lot of people put credit into the VWAP, so you have to be mindful of the VWAP. So we have the VWAP on there. We have our volume on there. We have our high Kanashi bars and we have our ATR. Our ATR is the average true range, okay? And I've got it set to one. So if we come in here and look at the preferences on the average true range, I'll just click on that. And you can see, I've just got it set to one and 1.0. And that's just kind of to tell us that the market is if it's above the, the, the average true range, we consider the market bullish. If it's below the average true range, we consider the market bearish. And the market will just kind of snake up and down across that average true range. And that gives us the idea that we got the, the rally and the pullback. Okay, the Dow is coming into something that might be tradable. All right, so you see this first rally off the Dow. It's pulling back. It's giving a little, it's doing what we call flagging. All right, so it's kind of a real ugly flag here on the S&P. But it's doing the same thing where we have lower highs. So remember, the, the definition of an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows definition of a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. And so when the market changes from making lower highs and lower lows to higher highs and higher lows, we've gone from a downtrend to an uptrend. Now, in the process of making an uptrend, we got higher lows and we got higher highs. But right now, it's flagging. Flagging means that we got higher lows, but we got lower highs. So it's not in an uptrend anymore because it's making lower highs. That is a hesitation in the trend, and that's what we like to trade. What we like to do, for me, that's a signal for entry. I think the market's going to hesitate. And if it continues to rally, uh, it'll break and start making higher highs once again. And then I can take the next leg up or the long position. So the first thing is we're bullish because we crossed the average true range. The market made a couple of rallies. I usually like to see four bars or five bars in that first rally, not just two like we got now. So this is weak. It's not good. We're getting a reversal on the Russell. The NASDAQ is pulling back a little bit farther than we want it to. And you'll notice that I'm using a stop order for entry and I'm trailing down off of the highs because I want it to break a new high. First candle to break a new high and I want to get long on that first candle to break a new high. Now, if it comes down and it breaks and starts to become negative or uh, crosses that ATR to the downside, well, we'll throw this one out because we're no longer bullish. We switched and went to the other side of the, of the uh, trend and we're now bearish. So we don't take our long position, we pull that off. But if we can get two bars, and if you remember seeing the, the pattern that I pulled up earlier, I don't wanna pull it up right now because then I would it'd put it in such front of the screen and we're getting ready to take a long position here. Look at how the Russell failed. The Russell failed to the long side, so now it's turning wanting to be bearish once again. But we're gonna watch and see if this market doesn't wanna rally. Now the, the NASDAQ, that just broke the first candle to break new highs on the NASDAQ. So that's a buy signal on the NASDAQ right there. So if you're gonna go long, that's where you'd go long on the NASDAQ. Notice that it stayed above the yellow dots. It did not cross below the yellow dots. Now the tails went down and stabbed it a couple of times, but it didn't close below the yellow dots. To, to break those yellow dots, it has to actually close below them. Same with going up. If it's gonna break the yellow dots, it has to actually have a close above the yellow dots. So in this case, it closed above the yellow dots on the net Dow, and it's given us a two-bar pullback, and that would give us the opportunity to get in long to the next first green bar to make a new. It's so weak, though. I doubt it's going to play through. I don't think we're going to see any any action on it, but we'll leave our order in there and see because it is a buy signal. If we get a first green candle to make a new high off of that, 
we're going to go long. But it's failing right now. It didn't break a new high. It's coming down with a third candle down. <clears throat> now, as long as that candle stays above the yellow dots, we can remain long, look for a long position. But notice on the, the NASDAQ, it's breaking the yellow dots. So it's going down and showing weakness, and it's going, it's going to close. We have 21 seconds, but it's going to close. It looks like it's going to close below the yellow dots. And so that's going to reverse our order once again. We're no longer bullish. We're now bearish on that market. And so we're going to probably see the same thing over here on the Dow. And we're seeing the same thing on the Russell. And so at this point, because the market's taken off to the downside, we're going to kill our order exit chart. We're not going to go long on the Dow. Now, it may be a mistake. The Dow might turn and rally. But if the NASDAQ and the S&P are dropping like rocks, it's not likely that we're going to get a big rally out of the Dow. Because remember, these things generally move in, in, in sync with each other. All right, let's come over here and see what we got going. John Mackey's, good to see you. Good morning, John. If there's anybody else out there, if you want to just say hi over in the chat window, that would be nice. It'd be nice to see who else is here. Say hello. Let's say everybody say hi. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell so you know when I go live, uh, YouTube will remind you that I'm coming live, send you a notice, and you can come and join us so you don't forget. But I've been trying to go live every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 7 o'clock. I've done that now for two weeks in a row. We'll see if we can continue that. Um, stay, stay out here and watch the markets together in the first hour of the day. Maybe try to put a few. Well, look, we're starting to get a little rally on here. We could try and put our order back into that long Dow. Problem is the market's just being so quiet. I probably shouldn't be trading right now. I should probably just probably sit aside and just watch a little bit longer. And it looks like that one's going to fail again. So I was looking to see if that wasn't going to give us that ABC up there. It never did on the Dow close below the yellow dots. And it did on the NASDAQ, but even the S&P didn't close below the dots before the, below the the average true range now it's going to try it's going to it looks like it wants to do it this time and the dow looks like it wants to close below the average true range so it's no longer bullish market and we got 15 seconds for that to go and if that one and that one close below i don't really want to take a long position on the dow and notice all the topping and bottoming tails on the s p and on the nasdaq both all, all the bars have topping and bottoming tails. That's that's total indecision. Okay, let's exit out of that. We're not going to go long even if it breaks higher. Because the the S and P, well, it didn't close below the. Look at that. It didn't close below it again. It didn't close below it on the S and P. Look at that. One, two. How many bars stabbed through there? One, two, three bars stabbed through there, and then none of them closed below the. The average true range. This one here looks like it's going to close below the average true range. This market is just being really super slow. So down here. Good to see you, John. Glad you could make it. Anybody else out there want to go ahead and say hi? We'll stick your name up on the screen. Let everybody see your, your name. Um, so go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. I do want to say that we are actually, this is a, we're actually, um, projecting into three different YouTube accounts. We're, we're, uh, live on trade mentors. We're live on commodity trading school, and we're also live over at track and trade. Now that's not going to last for long. So if you're over on track and trade watching, then go ahead and, come over and join us on Trade Mentors. And if you're over on Commodity Trading School watching, come over and join us on Trade Mentors because eventually I'm going to take off. At the end of the week, I'm going to take off. Um, no longer going to be broadcasting into Track and Trade. I know we got a bunch of guys over there in Track and Trade. So you guys are going to want to come over and subscribe and ring the bell over on Trade Mentors so that you can get notified when we go live because I'm broadcasting through three different channels. I want you to come in everybody, and we're gonna put everybody into one classroom instead of having three classrooms. And it'll make it easier for uh, YouTube, makes it easier for me, it makes it easier for everybody to have everybody over into one classroom instead of going out to three different classrooms. And that's why the other day we were talking, it was like one guy was like, hey, somebody's talking, it's not in our class. Well, he was in another classroom. So he would come through it to us through the, the commodity trading school or the track and trade classroom, and you were over in the um, 
trade mentors classroom. Okay, we finally got our first break down there on the Dow uh, after that big long run. Now that's another pattern right there where you get a, a rally and then a long set of red dots and then we generally get a red bars and then that red bar should take off or a green bar. A lot of long set of red bars and then that last green bar should take off again. But that that's it came down and it broke below and turned the market. It went below the yellow dots and turned the market bearish. So I'm not real thrilled to get in on this market. Now, the right now, right there would be a good place to enter if we wanted to. It'd be a very low probability of, of failure. And so if we did get stopped out, it would be a very small loss. So we could take a long position here, but it's just such a rotten. Everything else is going down. I mean, the NASDAQ is pushing lower. The S&P is still pushing lower. The Cousin Russell's pushing lower. I don't see a reason why I'd want to go long on the Dow. But we could. We could take a long position on the Dow right there. And if we were wrong, it would be a very small loser. And we would have been wrong and we'd have taken a loss. So good thing we didn't do it. Now, we could also take a short one off there because that could be the long set of dots down, the small retracement back, and then a continuation of the downtrend. So anytime you think that the market's going to go one direction, you can always remember that there's an opposite counter argument to that direction. So this is our A, B, C to the long side, anticipating the market starting to rally and go up and test previous highs. Or you can come in and say, well, maybe it's going to go down. So you come in and you you come in with your Fibonacci projection and you say, well, here's your down, your back up, up to the top and then continue the downtrend. All right. So it can go both directions. And that's why you do the reversal stop, where if you're wrong, you reverse your position because a failed pattern is oftentimes the best pattern in the other direction. So we'll do reversal stops. And that's why I have my QOCO set up in track and trade to be a reversal stop. Now, remember, <clears throat> when you do this type of trading, you don't want to trade with just free charts off the Internet because they're not going to they're no help to you. You need to have a actual trading platform. A trading platform, whether it's this one or another one, you want to have a professional level, professional grade trading platform because a trading platform actually does a lot of the hard work for you. It does the trading for you, whereas charts on the Internet, they don't. If anything, they just have a buy, sell button and away you go. But um, for example, I have this button right here, this QOCO button programmed, and you can see how I've got mine set up in this one. And this is for me to do reversals. So I can reverse my position. If I'm wrong, the market will automatically reverse my position and take me the other way. And it'll automatically trail my stops up and down behind the market. And in this case, I got it set to price bars back. But you can set it to anything. You can set it to ticks back or percent back or whatever. And you can trail on whatever levels you want. For my strategy, I like higher highs and higher lows, lower highs and lower lows. And in this case, we should have taken or could have taken a short position off that green pullback bar and continue the downtrend. Same thing over here on the Russell. We had a long downtrend, one bar pullback. That would have been our entry to the next downtrend, downside. So here's the long downtrend, one bar back. Now we're going long again. Had we gone long and then reversed it, we'd be short right now with two contracts. But we didn't do that. So that's why I have, you'll notice that I have my quick quantity buttons over here. I have them set to quantity one, quantity three, quantity five, seven, nine, and 11. And you're like, well, that's kind of a weird way to have your buttons. So why don't you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? But I want to go one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 11. And the reason I do that is so that I can reverse, reverse, reverse. I don't want to reverse too many times because it gets ridiculous. But if you want to go long and remember, because each pattern can have a you know, a logical reason why it would go long or short. And so if you take the long side and you're wrong, well, you just reverse the position and go short. And so you can do one versus the other. And by having the software automatically do that for you, it significantly reduces your um, your losses and puts you in the other direction. And then you can either decide whether you want to recover your loss or whether you want to take the profit uh, out of the trend. Now that cousin cousin Russell is really doing well. Now cousin Russell is the one where I always often tell people if you're going to trade and you're just getting started and you're new, cousin Russell is the one to trade because he trends. When he trends, he generally trends pretty well. Now you don't make a whole lot of money because the cousin Russell down here he's relatively small, but that's good because you also don't lose a lot of money. So let's take this trend right here. Let's go from the peak of this green bar to where the market's currently trading. That's three hundred and eighty dollars. $380 move. 
Now, had we done that same thing over here on the NASDAQ from where it's at to the currently trading, that's $850. So can you see the difference between the two? And you say, well, how much was the investment on each one? Well, each one, both of them were close to about a thousand bucks. So you put a thousand dollars into the NASDAQ and that move would have been up uh, $850. If you put a thousand dollars into the Russell, it would have been up $380. Let's look at the, the Dow. So if we take the Dow, that Dow would have been $235. So the Russell actually moved farther. Well, of course, you can see it moved farther. And then the, that from that bar to that bar on the S&P, you can see in there's about $350. So you can see the difference in sizes between all the different markets. <clears throat> And that's why, you know, you watch, you, I like to start off with the smaller market and then move to the larger market at once I get a, a little bit of money going. Okay, we're finally breaking out the bottom down here on the Dow. We're breaking out the bottom of that natural or of that horizontal trend. So we're breaking out of the bottom of the, look at the S&P still dropping. So our daily charts, you remember when we first started the daily charts, they were um, very bearish. And so they're continuing that bearish trend. We're watching the, the S&P fall. We're watching the, the Dow fall, and we didn't catch any of those. We were just kind of sitting here jabber jawing and talking and not getting too excited about anything. I thought maybe we'd get a reversal on that Dow, so I put an order to go long on the Dow, but then that failed, so I pulled it off, and then it turned and started to drop once again, too. So we missed our opportunity on both of those. I'm a very cautious trader. I'm not going to get crazy and start jumping in and out of the market with a whole bunch of orders. I want to make sure that it looks looks really good to me. I want to make sure that I got some perfect setups. And again, we were looking for this market because it was playing off of the average true range <clears throat> and had gone bearish right here. I wasn't too thrilled about getting into um, a long position. So I was being very cautious in here. And then the market turned and went bearish and down it went. So that was a good move and we missed it. Oh, and here we are missing the, the Russell on another one. So here's another rally. So here's one. Let's point these out. Might as well point them out. We're not catching them with our order. So there's drive one. There's drive two, and we'll continue down and anticipate drive three. All right, so we get in this downtrend, we got one set of drive, drive, one drive, and then we get a green bar. See that green bar? And then we get another bar, set of dar, dots, bars, and then we get two more green bars. And now we're looking for the third one. We generally get three in a row like that. So there's one, two, three, just like right straight out of the manual. Um, on the on cousin russell down here and you say with the manual what's the manual well here's the manual this is the manual it's called stock market playbook of strategies it has all of these in there and if we kind of flip through it you can see this is the playbook manual and this is the manual that we talk about where we go through and we talk about all this stuff that we're learning in this class and so there is our example of what we're talking about right there there's a three drive pattern it's two abcs in a row they lay over the top of each other, and that's all lined out in this book, and it teaches you all about how to do that. And you can pick up this book on Amazon for, I think it's like 38 bucks, and it's the manual for trading this strategy, these, these methods that we talk about here in class. So you can go out to Amazon, pick that book up, <coughs> and then you have the guide <coughs> and all the probabilities. And so we come through, and this is how you count those. As you can see, we got the A1, the A2, the A3. Then we got the B1, the B2, the B3, the C1, C2, and C3. And that's what we're seeing right here on the Russell right now. So we could come through <coughs> and we could label these. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. And so as we come down, this is drive one, this is drive two, this is drive three. So this would be your A drive, your B drive, and your C drive. And of course, this one here in the manual, well, let's see, you're not seeing the charts. So if I come back and show you over here on the Russell, you can see that we've got the Russell. This is drive A, this is the B drive, and this is the C drive, just like in the manual. So this is A drive, B drive, C drive. We generally look for three of those in a row. Look at this thing go. We really missed out on taking that short position. We should have taken that short position right up there on that reversal. And I was a little bit too nervous because we were still inside of the channel. I was looking for us to break out of that channel. And here we go, breaking the channel. Now, Another way to trade this, of course, is just to, you know, be cautious and careful about the arrows and notice that the arrows, you say, well, Len, why don't you just get in on every time you get an arrow long for the off the ATR or short off the ATR? Well, you can definitely do that. And I do that a lot sometimes. Just didn't do it today. And but I like to see the arrow and then I like to see the pullback and then the drop. So I like to wait for the arrow. I like to get the little pullback. Now, I the problem that I had here 
on this one too is I was looking for this market to continue the rally up. But I also like to see more bars back up for the downside. I want to see like four bars up and then a failure uh, to give us the upside. This was, you know, no flat bars. It was just weak. That's why I didn't take it. Not perfect. I'm not sure telling you how to trade. I'm just showing you how I trade and I'm being really cautious and careful and I missed a, a nice move. So uh, talking too much. <clears throat> All right, we're coming down into the third drive here, and it's it's given one more little push. It looks like it wants to come down and go back up and give us a green bar on the net, on the Russell. Now, usually we'll get a retracement, a full retracement, or uh, back to the 61.8% retracement. So we'll come in here and go from the top of the Russell to the bottom of the Russell, and that's where you put your Fibonacci ruler in there. And then you anticipate a rally back up into the 61.8 into the Fibonacci sweet spot up into here. We'll watch and see how that turns out. Right in there. <clears throat> so this is where we would expect this market to go. But we could also, again, this is the third drive, drive one, drive two, drive three, and that's a little tiny drive three. We could get in a continuation of the downtrend off of that three bar pullback and we could take a short position and and try and go short one more time now again the reason i don't want to do that i'm not real thrilled about going short right there is because we're already at the bottom of the third drive and that's a probability if you again if you go back to the book the book tells you that the probability of that is really super low so here's the probabilities table right in here where we start talking about the probabilities and once you get up into the top of the third drive or this one's this is for a bullish side that one's the the Russell is bearish. <clears throat> we generally look for that to be the end and for it to start to go the other direction. <clears throat> and so that's happening here on the, the NASDAQ. So if we come back and pull up the charts once again, the NASDAQ is starting to show that um, rally up in here at the bottom of this, uh, this uh, trend. I'm calling it uh, you know, it's not the third drive on the on the Nasdaq. Same with the, the the Dow. It's all one great big down drive. We never got these little pullbacks like we did on the Russell. The Russell looked more perfect as far as the color coding goes. So there we are on the color coding of the the Russell. It's starting to fall once again. So we're going from green to red. That would have been a sell signal right there, but it's a low probability sell signal. <clears throat> so you have to decide if you want to take it or not. So the market sometimes likes to swing through these little snaky patterns too. So you have to be mindful of that. Go down and we could snake down and then it could turn and just start to rally and come back up. Now, I don't want to take the first rally. I'm one of these guys that I'm cautious and careful. Again, I don't want to risk what I don't have to. We're only into this whole, we got seven hours of trading and we're only into it 30 minutes. So I'm not really sweating bullets here going, oh no, my whole life's over because I missed a trade. <clears throat> not not feeling that at all but i do want to get something off for you guys who are watching you come to watch me trade let's see if we can't get an order off i can show you where i missed a good one hey matt nice to see you matt made it back today good to see you uh, matt and i had a good conversation on the phone the other day if you guys would like to call and talk you can go to my website landturner.com and there's a link over there where you can sign up for a conversation you and i can talk in person and uh <clears throat> Steve Scott's made it to class. Good morning, Steve. It's great to see you. Glad you made it. If you guys want to, again, I want to make a comment that we're going to be, um, we're going to be moving on. right now. I'm, I'm simulcasting into three different YouTube accounts. I'm going into track and trade into commodity trading school, and I'm going into, um, trade mentors and, oh, look what's happening with the markets. Let's try, let's let's take a position. Let's see if we can get a trade off in here on the NASDAQ to the short side. If it fails, okay, we got, at least we got a position on the Dow is falling, the S&P is falling, the Russell's falling. So now let's see if the NASDAQ will fall too. So it should trail and follow along with the rest of them. So the others dropped, let's see if the NASDAQ won't drop now. If it won't, which is <laughs> Murphy's Law, that you get into the one that doesn't drop. And that's what we did yesterday too. We got into the one that didn't move, went the other direction on it. Well, the, all the others took off and went during one direction. The one we got into went the other opposite direction. We ended up taking a loss right out of the gate on our first trade. And it was on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's our biggest market. So if you take a loss on the NASDAQ, it usually hurts. 
Oh, and it's going to fail. It, I want it to immediately go in my favor. And if it doesn't immediately go in my favor, oh, and I missed the reversal too. I was too slow to catch the reversal. Now we're really hurting ourselves. Oh, look at that. I did it again. Made a mistake. Didn't get my reversal order in there fast enough. Too much talking. There, we're getting a second opportunity. Okay, it's coming back for us. Saying, you can get in a land. Go ahead, land. Get in. Okay, show me some strength. Watching the little chart in the upper right-hand corner. And then we can reverse that thing if it wants to go down. All right, I guess we're going to play this little channel here on the NASDAQ. Which probably isn't a very good idea. So once you get a market moves really strong, then it has a lot of it has a tendency to go sideways. So then it'll sit there and go sideways for a little while, just to try and rip everybody's wheels off. So it rallied on that break, thought it was going to go, and then it pulled back. So we took that entry on the pullback. We don't want it to break below that position and start to fall again. But if we do, we're going to reverse our position and then try to take the drop down out of the bottom of that little flag that it's forming right there. But we're we're long right now just with a single contract. We want that thing to... The, the only thing we don't want it to do is go sideways. If it continues to go sideways, it's going to rip our wheels off. So we need it to move. Once we get into the market, we need the market to move. We need it to go. Got to, got to get it to go. That's the thing. We've got to have a decisive market. We've got to be trading a market that's decisive in its direction. One way or the other. Just We just don't want a little whippy sideways market. That's all we don't want. Now, we're down $175. So for my strategy, I'm down. So I like to come in and just recover. So 175, we've only got one contract, so it's going to have to move. Clear up there for us to recover our loss. Let's see if it can get up there and recover our loss. So we also got our reversal trailing stop. So if it does come down and break a new low, it'll reverse and go the other direction. We won't. Uh, oh, it's not going. Come on. I hate it when you get in a market and then it just dies, dies right out of the gate. Just you get in and it does nothing. Those are the worst. Come on. Spank that pony. Okay, we finally got an arrow to the long side. We just got to get it to push up there and show some strength. Nobody wants to go long. Look at the volume. The volume's starting to drop on the rally. So that means this is weak. So it's probably not going to go up. So we got our reversal stop in there. So if we reverse and go short again, our stop is still in a losing position. It still hasn't made it up to break even to where we broke above that red bar. And it was too weak. So that was a reversal order. So it's now taken the reversal. Now we need it to fall off of that little flag formation right there. So we need it to fall. And it's going to rally again. Oh, my goodness. This time with two short. Our OCO is set to quantity one. So we're going to delete that one. I'm not going to reverse again if it if this market just suddenly decided it doesn't want to do anything. It just wants to go sideways. And if it breaks that, we're just going to get out. I'm not going to sit here and dink around with this market. Right. Just take a, take the loss and get out. It's, and we'll have to do a recovery off another order. Oh, this market is just going bouncing back and forth across the the ATR at this point. It's showing a little weakness. There we go. That's in our favor. But we need it to drop harder than that. Come on. Keep going down. The other markets are going down. You can do it too. Come on, buddy. 
and it stopped us out with one. We're still short one. Drop my other order in there, and we'll just say if that's the end, that's the end. Ah, down another four hundred bucks, just like yesterday. Exactly same thing that happened yesterday. Oh, now now it wants to go. Now it wants to go. We should have reversed one more time. Is that what you're telling me? Should have reversed one more time. This market's being too weak. Now I'm not going to take it. it it's going to go. If it goes, I want to see four bars proving that it's going to be bullish, then get a flag and we'll take the next one up and that'll be a good rally for a reversal. But the problem is we've got Russell starting to fall. This is exactly what happened yesterday. And then I waited until nine o'clock and then the market ran and I made a thousand bucks and got it all back plus 500 more. I was up over 20, up over 30,000 on this account. We started this account with 25,000 two weeks ago. We're up over 30,000 and this just took me back below 30,000. So $5,000 in two weeks, not bad for being a, a simple conservative trader in an hour in the morning. And then sometimes there's been two or three times I've had to go and wait for the top of the hour in another market to recover but we're doing pretty good we're doing okay i'm not sad not happy not happy when we got stuck stuck in this whipsaw market but i'm not sad well plenty of opportunities you see how cautious and careful i am you see how conservative i am so i want to wait for the market to set up a good strategy before i go look at the dow again look at that little that one little right there the little flag little bar one little green bar we should have traded that one rather than the NASDAQ. Because look at that thing dropping out at the bottom. Same thing here. Look, the, the, we'd have had better luck. Well, I don't know if we'd had much better luck over here on the S&P. It popped back and forth a few times, making lower highs. Now it's starting to fall. Cousin Russell's over here getting ready to fall once again. NASDAQ's the only one that's really proven. Hope you guys are doing better than I am. Look at the NASDAQ, just back and forth now, back long again. See, a good thing we didn't sit there and try and reverse and reverse and reverse on that thing. That would have killed us. Did kill us. Let's see. Let's see if it can prove that it wants to actually rally. Give us some flat bottom bars and then a little flag to the long side and we'll see if we can't take a reversal. This market looks like it's bottoming out and wants to turn and start to, to go up, which would be consistent with what we're seeing on the Cousin Russell over here. Cousin Russell has made three drives down. So he's made the nice little Elliott wave down to the bottom. And now um, look for him to rally. Once again, I was mentioning, oh, look at it go now. Now it really decided it wanted to move after it did all that broadening pattern of whipsaw stuff. Okay, we're getting a little reversal here on the Russell. The s and starting to move higher. Let's see if it wants to prove that it wants to rally back up into the channel. So if it does, we'll take a long position off the next opportunity. So I was talking... I was telling you that we're broadcasting into three different channels. We're broadcasting into trade mentors. We're broadcasting into commodity trading school and we're broadcasting into uh, track and trade. That's three different channels on YouTube. We're going to consolidate that. And so all you guys who are on track and trade, you're going to need to come over to trade mentors and sign up and ring the bell. So you get notified because uh, we're not going to broadcast into the track and trade um, site anymore. This is the educational site. So we're going to be on the educational YouTube channel, which is Trade Mentors. Trade Mentors is the educational side of the Gecko Software Track and Trade um, component. And so we've also got Commodity Trading School. Commodity Trading School kind of focuses more on traditional commodities, and we're going to trade more than just the traditional commodities. So I want to pull out of there. So, so for those guys that are in Commodity Training School, we're going to go over and we're going to just stay in Trade Mentors. Trade Mentors is the one we want to be in because that we can do stocks and futures in there. We kind of feel like that's a little bit more broad market view as opposed to just commodity trading school. Although we do spend most of our time trading the indexes in the commodities market or in the futures industry over out of Chicago, but it gives us a broader view. And it just kind of consolidates everybody into one class and we don't get people spread out across three different classes. So if you can come and join us over in Trade Mentors, 
Uh, I'm going to broadcast into all three classrooms um, for the rest of this week. And then next week, no more. It's going to just be in Trade Mentors. And we're just trying to get everybody into one classroom. All right. The rally on the reversal isn't very strong, but it's flat bottom. So we get flat bottom bars on the S&P, on the Dow, and on the Russell, and on the NASDAQ. Flat bottom bars are good. Okay, now on the NASDAQ, we're getting lower highs. So we're getting the flag. You just have to catch one, you know, I. Uh, you just have to catch one good trend and make all your money off of one or good trend. You catch one or two good trends and you're, you're golden. But you get whipsawed through some of that whipsaw stuff like we just did. Then it puts you down. You have to recover. And then you have to go and try and catch a trend again. So the recovery is, okay, look at this market's rallying. That market's rallying. We're going to go ahead. We're trading the NASDAQ. Look at the S&P set up for a perfect rally. We look for that market to rally. Cousin Russell's starting to rally. NASDAQ is the one that's given me, is the one I want to trade. But I want it to show stronger strength than that. We got 18 seconds left in this bar. What are you going to do? Uh, everything's faking out. These might just be slow pullbacks and then the markets fall again, right? Could be a little four bar pullback. It hasn't broke the yellow dots yet. It did on the NASDAQ. Oh, we better get our order in there. We're going to miss our NASDAQ. If it wants to go long. Okay, we're taking the long out of the NASDAQ again. We're only in with one contract. Okay, everything's going so far, so good. So far, so good. Let's not have anything die on us. We're going to add our OCO in here. Um, am I going to do OCO or are we going to do a reversal? If this thing fails on us. So this is our little flag. So that's a flag formation. It's just, it should push just decisively up out of that flag. See that little flag right there? That's our little pennant formation. Now for this, is the, this is the pennant, the, the flagpole. And then it comes down, makes the flag. Now it should rally once again. And it's failing on us. Oh, my goodness. So I put a reversal in there in case it wants to drop out the bottom. We'll catch it and reverse it. But it's just being stupid again. The downtrend was the one we should have been in, and we missed that one. On the cousin Russell, we even gave us two or three shots at it, and we missed all all of them on the Russell. The Nasdaq wasn't quite as smooth and clean, but it did give us a couple of different entry points to get into that thing, and we missed those two. Now we just need it to rally up out of this flag, and it went up, broke the previous high, see that, and failed. Came up, see that high right there. We're in this one. Let's go full screen on this one so you can see what's going on a little better. The stochastics indicator is way up in the upper region. So maybe you can see that a little better. And we just got reversed. Now it better drop hard because now we're really in trouble. We've met our max daily goal, daily loss. So it went up and broke that previous high. Oh, what a stupid market. Come on, come on, make a decision. We 
We need $780 to recover. Where is that? That's going to be a big move. I don't know if we can recover all in one move. That'd be all the way back up to our green brake line. We're going to trail one price bar back to break even. We need it to go. There we go. We're finally moving in our favor anyway. This is whether it can continue the strength. Come on. Okay, at least we got a flat bottom. We got one flat bottom bar. Now we got to have two flat bottom bars, three flat bottom bars, four flat bottom bars. That's what we want. We're coming. We're only up 270. Come on. Come on. Push higher. There we go. Keep it going. Keep the momentum. We're momentum traders, and if we don't have any momentum, we can't trade. Give us some momentum here today. Come on. Rally back up. Oh, it's failing on us. Don't do that. Don't. Oh, don't do that. I had to pull the trigger. I had to get out. It started to come back down against us again. Of course, it comes down, stops us out, only to rally once again. What's it going to do? It's just showing weakness. So on the first sign of weakness, I just had to pull the trigger because I couldn't, I couldn't um, risk having it come down and stop us out with a big loss again. Gave us another flat bottom, though. So now watch. It's going to take off to the moon, and I should have stayed in. Yeah, showing weakness. Oh, my goodness. This may be our first big losing day. I may not be able to recover from this one in one day, one trick. We may have to take a little loss on this day. I haven't had a losing day in two weeks, and I think today might be that day. We broke 780 bucks. I don't know. Yesterday, I waited till the top of the hour and made $1,000 in 10 minutes. So Just couldn't push higher, could it? This mark is just too bearish. Now watch it turn. We should have reversed and gone short, and it's going to drop all the way back down to the previous lows. It's breaking the, putting in a spider web. So let's put in our spider web. One, two, three. Look at it drop. We'd have got all our money back if we'd have reversed one more time. <sighs> well, $780. I've recovered from that many, many times. It's just whether I want to take the risk to do it again. I have to have a pretty good setup to be able to want to get in and do that. I don't want to wait. I don't want to go through this little lousy, choppy market. We'll wait till the top of the hour and we'll come back and we'll try again. How sad. Frustrating. I have to go into recovery mode at 9 o'clock and then maybe at 10 o'clock to see if we can't do something.
I don't know. We'll have to see. I haven't had a red day in two weeks. This might be the red day. I don't know what's going to happen. Look at the Dow just going sideways across that flat top ninja right there. That's what I call that. That pattern right there. Well, let me show you. Look at this. Um, look at the Dow. We got the top. And so I'm going to come over. I think I got that in here. It's, let's turn this off so you can see. Let's turn this off so you can see. And then this one right here. See that pattern right there? So you can see how the bars are going across the top of the price bars. And we'd expect the mark to break out the top and to rally up. If it was the other way around with the with the yellow little bars, uh, yellow dots across the bottom, we'd expect it to break down. So if we take that pattern right there and we go back over to the market and we come back in here, oh, let's do this one here, get me out of the way. And that little right up there, that's a flat top ninja, right? That's what we call that. So we're expecting the market to break through those yellow dots and go back up. So it should be bullish. But right now it's just being really stupid and quiet. So it's probably not going to do a whole lot for the next half an hour. I think we're going to just kind of sit here and dance sideways for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And then I think we'll start. I think we'll see another trend just like yesterday. A little bit after nine o'clock, the market took off and started to move again. So we had our first move in this morning and I didn't take any of them. And then the one that I reversal, I took slammed me to the wall. I got pinned. So we got a couple bars down. We got a little bit of a flag here. It's trying to flag right here, but it's just struggling to even give us a, a decent little flag right there. So that would be a sell signal if you if we were up in green, we could take that one. It's not the greatest, but if we were green on the market, felt more confident than we do right now, we could take that in anticipation of seeing it fall back down, at least come down and touch our our spider web. Let's see if it drops down that far. So it should come down and test that area of support. The volume's really low. We haven't got a lot of volume. Volume's starting to weaken on the downtrend. If you have weakening volume on the downtrend right here, watch this. See, we have weakening volume on the downtrend here. I'm watching the NASDAQ. That's not good. You wanna have increasing volume in the direction of your trend. So if your trend is down, you wanna see the volume increasing as that market moves down. If the, if the volume is decreasing and your trend is down, that means that that's a weak market and you're not getting the strength that you need. No one's participating in the downtrend. Fewer and fewer and fewer people are participating in the downtrend, which means they're going to anticipate the reversal and the market should turn and start to rally once again. And so that's what you'd be looking for here. But it looks like it might make it down and touch our area of support on low volume. See, we got low volume though. It's just not pushing through. Nothing's really pushing through. We had that first push on the downtrend and I was jabber jawing too much and talking and missed it. Now look at this, even Russell. Even Cousin Russell over here has just done nothing. He's just died. No reversal, no no, no retracement, just died. Went sideways for the last, geez, almost the last half an hour. So the first half an hour was pretty good. There it goes. It touched it. So that was our little sell signal right there, and it came down and touched our line. So that was, we didn't, I didn't feel comfortable taking it because of the weakness, but. It made it anyway. So now let's see if it bounces off of that area or if it continues to fall through. We got another line right down here. Let's see if it can make it all the way down and test the new bottom. We got a little increase in volume. See that right there? So volume came in a little bit more as this market's pushing lower. So now you get people who like to buy the breaks of previous lows. So we'll see if that'll push through. 
or sell the breaks at previous lows. So we'll see if that pushes on through. We got one, two, three, four flat bottom bars or flat top bars. The downtrend is starting to come in. See if it'll go down and touch that green line. The Dow looks like it starts turning and starting to rally. It's getting a green bar on the Dow. Let's see if it's just a fake out green bar. It's a little tiny flag in there. Went up and spiked the average true range. Didn't close above it. NASDAQ still falling. That would have been a good little sell signal right there. We should have taken that one, but I didn't trust it. Didn't trust it. Wait till the top of the hour where I think we'll get more people stepping in. Get some better trends. I'll let you know tomorrow if I'm able to get that 780 back. Or if I just dig myself into a deeper hole. <laughs> that happens sometimes too. Oh, here we go. There the Dow's starting to try to push up one more time. Another green bar. Okay, so our NASDAQ, everything's just so slow right now. Everything's just dead. Look, it's kind of pushing, it's kind of wobbling in there. doesn't know whether it wants to break below that low or not and go down to the next one. That's another little flag. Okay, so it flagging, it's the NASDAQ is flagging again. So you can bracket those types of markets. Should we bracket it just for fun? Let's come in here and bracket. Oh, we might have missed our bracket. So you bracket those, those little points, and then the opposing order becomes the stop order. So you bracket it because you can put a buy if it breaks above the, the triangle and a sell if it breaks below the triangle. So you bracket that market, and then the opposing order becomes your trailing stop. And now if it, we went long, so if it, it should rally. And if it doesn't, then you can reverse again, edit, and you can say, I want this to be three. And you'd reverse in this market. Oh my gosh. We need it to decisively move in our favor. It just needs to move decisively. And it's there's no decisive movement in here at all. We're just being stupid trading right now. This is stupid trading. Because this market's got nothing to us. Not giving us anything. Started to rally out the top. Now it's going to reverse and go out the bottom. Question is, is it going to go? Yep, faked us out to the one direction. Now it's going to go the other direction. Let's we'll see if it'll go. So we're just digging our hole a little deeper, a little deeper each time you trade in this dead market. Come on. Decisively fall. We need you to go and just, you know, do it, do it, do it, machine, do it. All right, there we go. We got a little bit of movement in our favor finally. Okay, so where's our break even? We're 885 is our recovery. All right, we got our money back. Okay, so we're back to zero. We got it. All right, guys, we're not leaving here with a big $800 hole in the ground. We got it back. We're back to zero. Well, now we can start to trade at the top of the hour. I'm not going to trade anymore till the top of the hour, and I'm gonna wait for another new trend, another new setup, a whole nother system. We caught that last one on that little, uh, finally caught a, uh, had to do a reversal, but we caught that little trend break out of the bottom of that um, that flag, and we at least got our money back. We're back 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, that makes me feel better. Now I'm gonna go have some bacon and eggs and come back here in 30 minutes and see how the market's doing. All right, guys. That's a wrap for today. I got a lesson for you. Don't run off. I got a lesson for you. I have a little lesson here. 
Hold on one second. I tried to always give you a lesson yesterday. I forgot. Can't remember. I think this is the lesson we're on, right? So, trader state of mind. To grow as a trader, always try to trade on the very edge of your comfort zone. So trading larger size is how you increase profits. It's also how you increase losses. I actually think we talked about this one, but let's do it anyway. Trading on the edge of your comfort zone allows you to continually push yourself as a trader to achieve greater and greater growth potential. Usually we want to catch or capture the same trends or the same strategies, right? But just with larger and larger quantities, as we get bigger and bigger accounts and we get more and more confident with the strategies, then we can increase our size and that's going to increase our profits without having to catch any longer trend. Of course, we want to catch the longer trends too. And we can, you know, if once we get to the point where we got some money and we build up a little cushion, we can start doing some additional strategies and uh, haven't had a chance to do a whole lot of that in the last week or two, but uh, that's what we want to do. We're going to just kind of get ourselves built up to the point where we feel comfortable taking larger and larger sizes. And then we can have larger contract or larger trends that we catch. And then we can start doing some real fun things like pillaring, pyramiding, and castling. And I'm anxious to teach you those. Pillaring, pyramiding, and castling. And so we need to get some trends. We need to get some money under our belts. And we need to get the market to move in our favor and catch some big moves so that we can do those. So I'll show you how those are done. Hopefully we'll get the opportunity to do that. But for now, just realize that, you know, always kind of trade on the edge of your comfort zone and push yourself a little bit sometimes so that, you know, even if you have your little bit of a down position, take those trades and get a recovery. And I always think it's a good, good, good strategy to hit the recovery. Um, a lot of guys tell you not to do that. But for me, I'm not telling you how to trade. I'm just telling you how I like to trade. And you can see that the, getting the recovery made me feel a whole lot better. And now I feel like I can move forward uh, with our next session. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. And that's a wrap for today. Let's see. we got some comments in here. Thanks. All right. John Mackey. Thank you, John, for coming. we got Henry in here saying, hey, it's good to see you guys. If you guys want to go leave a comment down in the in the in the in the comments below, that's really helpful. Make sure you hit the little thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, again, we're in three different classes. We're going to consolidate that all into one class. Uh, I did realize some guys left some comments in some of the other classes, and I hadn't answered those yet. I'll get to those today. And But let's all start trying to move over into the Trade Mentors classroom, and that's where we're going to go from uh, from now on. Start that next Monday. We'll only do the, the three classes for the rest of the week. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. Catch you tomorrow morning. We'll do it again.